Welcome to the CSSN channel. Our topic for today is how vitamin D affects the immune system and lowers inflammation, hospitalization, and mortality rates from viral infections, including COVID-19. My name is Abu Zar Habibinia. I have an MD degree and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sport Edition. Subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube to enjoy the information that we share on a regular basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness, and sport edition. Okay, we have published two videos about vitamin D and three videos about immune system in the past. In the first video that we published on January 28, 2020, we discussed thoroughly how you can boost your immune system against coronavirus infection. On that video, we showed the importance of vitamin D in a well-functioning immune system before even they give a name to virus, before they give a name to the disease, and also way before they declare the pandemic. As you know, WHO declared the pandemic on March 11, 2020, while we published that video on January 28, and we showed how important vitamin D is for the immune system. Okay, our presentation today is going to have three parts. In the first part, I'm going to show you the impact of vitamin D on hospitalization and mortality rates from COVID-19. In the second part, I'm going to show you what kinds of benefits you could get if you keep your vitamin D level about 125 nanomole per liter or 50 uh, nanograms per ml. And in part three, we're going to explore the mechanisms by which vitamin D affects the immune system and lowers inflammation, which leads to less severe form of the disease. Let's go with part one. Let's see how vitamin D has an impact on hospitalization and mortality rate from COVID-19. I am going to introduce to you four studies and articles, and I'm going to put the links at the end of this presentation and also in the description of this video. And hopefully you can go there and read the full articles for yourselves. On October 27, 2020, a study from Spain was published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. Based on that study, about 82% of those people who got hospitalized for COVID-19, they had low levels of vitamin D. On November 27, 2020, a study from Germany was published. This is the title of the study. Vitamin D insufficiency may account for almost 9 out of 10 COVID deaths. On December 11, 2020, an article was published in the Medscape website. Based on that article, vitamin D deficiency increased mortality rate from COVID-19 about 3.7 times, almost four times. So vitamin D deficiency quadrupled COVID-19 death rate. And on December 11, another article was published in Nature.com. In that article and study, the scientists linked five important genes to the most severe form of COVID-19. Those five genes are IFNAR2, TYK2, DPP9, CCR2, and OAS1. It is interesting to know that vitamin D interacts with over 3,000 genes in the body. And surprisingly, four of them are here. Basically, vitamin D interacts with the first gene, second one, third one, and fourth one. But this gene, OAS1, usually functions independent of vitamin D. I'm going to explain briefly the connection between vitamin D deficiency and one of those genes and basically severe form of COVID-19. Let's go with this one, uh, CCR2. If you have low levels of vitamin D, if you are suffering from uh, vitamin D deficiency, what's going to happen? Vitamin D deficiency is going to lead to 
overexpression of this gene, CCR2. When this gene, CCR2, was expressed more than usual, what's going to happen? Overexpression of CCR2 is going to increase migration and adhesion of the monocytes. That means more and severe inflammation. Let's go with part two. In the second part, I'm going to share an amazing chart with you. It is about the benefits of vitamin D. The chart that you can see here has been adapted from this book, Vitamin D, Physiology, Molecular Biology, and Clinical Applications, the second edition by Dr. Michael Hollick. This is one of the best books ever that has been written about vitamin D in medicine. It is over 1,100 pages. Dr. Michael Hollick is an amazing endocrinologist specializing in the field of vitamin D. He's a professor of medicine at Boston University School of Medicine. As you know, there is no universal agreement about optimal levels of vitamin D. However, they have agreed that we keep vitamin D level between 75 to 250 nanomole per liter. Based on this book and based on this chart that has been adapted from page 12 of this book, if you increase your vitamin D level to 125 nanomole per liter or uh, 50 nanogram per ml, let's see what kind of health benefits and incidence prevention you could achieve. Austria Malaysia is going to go down about 100%. Peripheral vascular disease is going to go down 80%. Diabetes type 1, 80%. Cancers all combined, 75%. Caesarean section, 75%. Falls among women, 72%. Colon cancer, 67%. As you can see in here, kidney cancer, 67%. Breast cancer, 50%. Diabetes type 2, 50%. Fractures all combined, 50%. Multiple sclerosis, 50%. Heart attack in men, 50%. Preeclampsia, 50%. Endometrial cancer, 35%. And non-Hodgkin lymphoma, 30%. And finally, ovarian cancer, 25%. Now you can see that by increasing vitamin D level to around 125 nanomole per liter, what kind of health benefit uh, you could uh, get from vitamin D. So keep your vitamin D level higher. Let's go with part three. How does vitamin D affect the immune system to lower the mortality rates from viral and bacterial infections, including COVID-19? But let's keep in mind that when it comes to the rule of different nutrients in boosting the immune system, vitamin D definitely takes the center stage. In general, vitamin D is going to boost the immune system by three different mechanisms. Let's review those three mechanisms. Here's the first one. Vitamin D is going to uh, increase the production of antimicrobial peptides. Antimicrobial peptides are sort of uh, small proteins that are produced naturally by the body and they can kill any viruses and bacteria in the body. When the production of those antimicrobial peptides was increased, the risk of respiratory tract infections and pneumonia is going to go down and then ARDS is going to go down. ARDS stands for Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. It is very life-threatening and serious condition and has higher mortality rate. When someone develops lung infection, the whole purpose of medical care should be this, not to let the patient to end up in ARDS. As I said, ARDS has a higher mortality rate. Mild form of ARDS has a mortality rate of above 35% moderate for 40 percent and severe for about 46 percent and also depending on cause and other underlying conditions uh, the mortality rate from ARDS could reach 
up to 80%. The second mechanism, vitamin D is going to decrease the release of cytokines. Cytokines are small proteins that are important in cell signaling. When the release of cytokines uh, was decreased, cytokine storm is going to go down, ARDS decreases, and then definitely mortality rate is going to drop. And the third mechanism is this. Vitamin D is going to lower inflammation. Inflammation goes down, ARDS goes down, and mortality drops. And please keep in mind that inflammation definitely is a part of cytokine storm and cytokine storm is going to lead to severe inflammation. Actually, in medicine, we cannot really separate them. Now you know the three mechanisms by which vitamin D basically can affect the immune system. Now we're going to have a little bit deeper discussion about those three mechanisms. Let's go with antimicrobial peptides. Let's see what they are, where do they come from, and how they function. If you remember from our first video, which was how to enhance the immune system against coronavirus infection, in that video we thoroughly discussed that your immune system is going to form four lines of defense against any bacterial and viral infection. In that video we discussed that macrophages are the first line of defense, neutrophils are the second line, and monocytes are the third line of defense against any infection. As you can see on the board, those three groups of white blood cells under the influence of vitamin D they're going to produce two very important antimicrobial peptides or antimicrobial proteins. The first one is called defenescence, and the most famous one is uh, beta-2 defensin. And the second one is called catalysidins. Catalysidins, uh, they are especially effective against tuberculosis. This is why vitamin D is a part of treatment for tuberculosis. The most famous uh, catalysinin I'm going to put in here for you, it's called H-CAP-18. So, those three groups of white blood cells under the influence of vitamin D, they're going to produce two very important antimicrobial peptides. These two antimicrobial uh, peptides, they can kill any virus and bacteria in the body. So when you have enough vitamin D, what's going to happen? Those white blood cells, they're going to be able to produce enough of these two antimicrobial peptides to decrease the risk of infection and to decrease the severity of infection. And if you don't have enough vitamin D, what's going to happen? Definitely, your body will not be able to produce enough of these two important antimicrobial proteins to protect you. Let's go with the second mechanism. Through four different mechanisms, vitamin D can affect the release of different cytokines which is going to lead to lower risk of cytokine storm, followed by less severe infection, lower risk of ARDS and mortality. Vitamin D is going to affect the lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are one of the major groups of white blood cells in the body. Lymphocytes under the influence of vitamin D, they're going to produce less interleukin-1, interleukin-6, interleukin-17 and TNF-alpha. And definitely when the production of these four cytokines by lymphocyte went down, the risk of cytokine storm is going to go down. And also vitamin D is going to affect another group of white blood cells, and they are called dendritic cells. Dendritic cells under the influence of vitamin D, they're going to produce less interleukin-12, but they're going to increase the production of an inhibitory protein which is called ILT3. ILT3 stands for immunoglobulin-like transcript 3. When the production of interleukin-12 went down and the production of ILT3 went up, the risk of cytokine storm is going to go down. And vitamin D is going to affect a gene. That gene is called, as you can see here, MKP1. 
MKP5 stands for Map Kinase Phosphatase 5. Actually, YWMD is going to upregulate this gene. When this gene got upregulated, it's going to lead to less production of interleukin 6, TNF alpha, definitely lower risk of cytokine storm. And finally, YWMD can affect a signaling pathway inside the cell. That signaling pathway is called NF kappa beta signaling pathway. Actually, vitamin D is going to downregulate this signaling pathway. When this signaling pathway got downregulated, it's going to lead to less production of interleukin-6, TNF-alpha. Definitely, we can have lower risk of cytokine storm. Now you know how vitamin D can affect the release of different uh, cytokines which is going to lead to lower risk of cytokine storm and lower risk of ARDS and at the end mortality rate. Let's go with the third mechanism. Here is how vitamin D can decrease inflammation. First, Vitamin D is going to decrease the production of a protein. It's called hepcidin. Hepcidin is a protein that is produced by monocytes, liver cells, and intestinal cells. And basically, hepcidin is the master regulator in iron metabolism. When the production of hepcidin goes down, intracellular iron is going to go down, and then inflammation is going to decrease. And also, vitamin D can decrease prostaglandin receptors and the expression of COX-2, which is going to lead to less production of prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are substances that play main role in any inflammation. And obviously, when the production of prostaglandins decreases, inflammation is going to go down. Now you know how vitamin D can affect the immune system to lower inflammation decrease the severity of infections and protect us. I really hope that you learned something interesting today. And if you don't want to miss our next video, you can definitely subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.